Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning back here again for another video. This is Son of Liberty. Today's video marks the new launch of my new series here on YouTube where I'm going to be taking a closer look at different concepts uh, within the training community. I'll be sharing different stories from people within the special operations community that I've met over the past year with Fieldcraft Survival. And some of these things may just be simple tips and tricks to help you become a better shooter. All right, guys, so in this video, Mike's going to be talking about two topics, right? One is going to be creating mental scripts. The other one is going to be perception. Now, in regards to mental scripts, uh, if you are new to the shooting community, you're just kind of getting into this thing, let me give you an example of a bad uh, mental script in which I had created. Very early on in my uh, shooting um, journey, uh, adventure, if you will, one of the things that I used to do at the range is I'd have my target up or multiple targets. I would draw my gun, fire two shots, boom, boom. Maybe I would engage two or three targets. Two shots, two shots, two shots, disengage. Same thing, repeat, repeat. Go home, come back to the range, repeat. That is a negative mental script which I had created and implemented it into my training regimen. The problem with that is, is obviously for a multitude of reasons, um, my mind was stuck in two shots stop, two shots stop. One of the things that you're going to see in the upcoming video is me actually creating a bad a mental script on camera. Mike catches it, brings it to my attention. Okay, um, These are things that I want to share with you guys because they are opportunities for us to learn together and that's what this channel is about. The second one is going to be perception. Um, he's going to be talking about that um, in the video, but we have to keep in mind, I believe that this is probably one of the most crucial because we are talking about the modern society of cameras. Cameras are everywhere all over the world. The thing about cameras is when people are watching them, they end up creating a perception of what they think they saw on camera. So anyway, guys, that's enough talking. Uh, I give you guys uh, Mike Glover, former Special Operations Green Beret and CEO of Fieldcraft Survival. Taking the time to spend with us on Saturday? Saturday? Saturday, Saturday morning. Um, one thing I want to lay out to you guys is this is a very careful and calculated course. The reason it is that way because there is one, a lot of liability, not on me, on you. And when you think about concealed carry, Raul's block of instruction is the execution phase of what we're, we're talking and discussing this morning. Because what we found in teaching civilians, the carry, or CCW, is most of it is focused on the draw stroke, punching the gun and taking shots. Right? We call that, like I just said in the classroom, a behavioral script. Like that's the action. That's the switch that you kick on and the execution method in which you are efficient and effective. That is probably the most highlighted element of this entire process. You can go on Instagram and see a million versions of it with a pro time. But the problem with that mindset is that's assuming that you've done all the right things and steps and processes prior to that going down. Let me start off this block instruction by telling you, if you shoot somebody in real life, you've probably made a lot of mistakes. Now, there are worst case scenarios, which we plan for, where you have no choice. You have to defend your life. But I like to start this class off by asking questions and talking as a group to see where people's mindsets are. So, let's start with you. Um, what is your criteria to shoot somebody with your concealed carry pistol in defense of your life? Let me give you a scenario. Because that's hard to answer. I mean, I have a legal answer for that. You're at a gas station. And you're pumping gas with your right hand and your left hand's in your pocket. You're carrying a Glock 43. That's like a Houdini act right there, man. I was like, 43? Thank you. You're not supposed to tell sorry. me. Sorry. <laughs> you just gave away my secrets. Sorry, That's sorry. Not... So you're carrying a Glock 43, a appendix carry in your waistband. You're pumping gas with your right hand, your left hand's in your left pocket, and a man 
who is the only man in the area, there's nobody else around, walks up to you between your car and the gas pump, and he stands five feet in front of you, and he says, you have any money? What's your response? No. No. Then he says, I know you have money because you have a nice car. Do you have any money? No. no. Then he says, hey, listen, I'm going to take your money, and you're going to give me your money. Give me your money. What do you do? Say no. Then he lifts his shirt and shows you the back strap of a Glock 19. So do you want me to give you the answer I gave you two days ago or the one that I thought I needed to give you? Yeah, what do you do? I would have to draw my pistol and shoot him. Okay. Yeah, we talked about this before. Sorry. I, I, I my prompt, other answer was, leave. No, I prompt all my magic tricks that way. Okay. I talk to you in advance. <laughs> but, so her criteria is she sees the back strap of a gun. She draws her pistol and takes shots. One, instinctively, made. What's the inherent problem, Dan, with somebody presenting a gun, using the back of the strap to show them as a potential threat, where they're telegraphing threats, yeah. and then you shooting them? Well, it's a potential threat. It's not an actual threat. So on video, it would just look like you drew me. That's the key. Me. The key is what he just said about the video. There is imminence of threat, but is it an immediate threat? But on the video, how does it look? Okay. So the guy walks up to you, and this is perception, right? But perception is what puts you in prison for the rest of your life. You walk up to the guy, the guy walks up to you, and he says, I just asked her for directions. And she told me to go f*** myself. And then I said, hey, you don't have to get rude. And she said, go f*** yourself again. And then I felt in fear of my life, and I, I pulled my shirt back a little bit, and I don't know what happened, but she went to draw her pistol. In the defense of my life, I drew my pistol and I shot her. She's in the hospital and she's going to survive. And you're charged with manslaughter, if not attempted murder. Because the perception on how we perceive the world around us is important, but the perception of, let's call it, the system above us is just as important. One problem that we have is, one, we've never mental modeled what our actions are going to be and what our criteria is going to be to draw my pistol and kill somebody. All right, guys. So anyway, what is your guys' thoughts? I'd love to hear you guys sound off down below. Um, in regards to mental scripts, have you seen anybody create negative ones before? Um, have you guys also done any, if you're willing to divulge that information, uh, what kind of negative scripts have you guys developed uh, on your own in your own personal training? Um, has this video brought any information to light that you hadn't thought about before? And what do you guys think about the perception of people's, um, you know, their viewpoint or perception of a self-defense or lethal encounter on CCTV? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down below. Um, if you're new here, more videos like this are going to be coming up here this year. Uh, I'd love to have you on board as a subscriber, getting very close to 15,000 subscribers. Uh, I'd love for you guys to stick around for this journey. So as always, guys, thank you so much for your continued support here on the channel. Till that next video, guys, take care. Be safe.